Hi there everyone, this is Professor Tomney from the Chem Complete series, and today we are going to continue our lecture in Organic Chemistry 2 on alcohols, and we are specifically going to take a look at protection of alcohols and protection groups. So when we get ready to deal with protection, the, this is really one of the first times you come across protection in organic chemistry, and the whole idea behind protection is you have a certain functional group, in this case we're going to say an alcohol, and we have a reaction um, that would potentially interfere with the alcohol group, and we do not want the alcohol to be participating in this reaction. So let's say, for instance, and we'll come back to an example like this, a Grignard. So if I have CH3 MGBR, the problem here is that the CH3, which has a very strong partial negative, is going to deprotonate this hydrogen that's on the alcohol. And so that's problematic. In other words, if I have something else somewhere on this R group, I have another group that I want to react the Grignard with, the Grignard's going to go after the alcohol before it would go after some other group on this chain here, like a carbonyl. And so what I need to do is I need to protect the alcohol, which we'll represent with a P. We'll show in uh, a little bit more detail in just a minute. But I'm going to protect the alcohol. So I'll remove that proton and put a protecting group there. Then I'll proceed with my Grignard reaction. So that will manipulate something with the R that's of interest to me. And then after I finish with that, I can deprotect to get my original functional group back. So then I'll have the R that's modified from the Grignard, and I'll get this back. Now keep in mind, because a lot of students um, tend to forget this at first when we're learning this, there is no reason to protect a functional group simply to deprotect it right away. There's always an in-between reaction or an intermediate reaction that is of interest that would normally conflict with the original functional group you're going to be protecting. You're protecting it from a reaction. So in this case, I'm protecting the alcohol from being attacked by the Grignard reagent. I can get through the reaction and then I get the alcohol back. So let's take a look at uh, some real examples here as we continue to work with this. So when we protect alcohols, the main protecting group is TMS. And that's not to say it's the only one, but the way that we normally protect alcohols is we turn alcohols into ethers. So we turn them into OR groups of some sort. Now TMS is a special type of ether. It is a trimethylsilyl ether. Okay, so that's trimethyl, meaning I've got three methyl groups. And I'm not sure how much you guys know in terms of your um, non-organic compounds, I guess, so to speak. But silyl is right underneath carbon. So if I look on the periodic table, here's carbon, and here's the silyl, the silicon group. And so this is a good mimic of carbon, and we actually end up using it because it's a little bit easier to deprotect than a regular um, ether if I were to use carbon. So the structure here for this compound is going to have trimethyl. Uh, I just screwed that up. So I'm going to clear this. Now the reason I screwed that up, I didn't have the silo in the middle. I had the carbon. So let's try this again. Trimethyl silo. Okay. Now if it's an, oops, I am just screwing up all over the place here. CH3. Okay. Now if this is attached to what was originally an alcohol, this is what you have here. This whole portion is protecting the alcohol, what would be that acidic proton that would be removed during the Grignard reaction. Okay, now the reagent that is actually going to be used in order to protect is a chlorine that's placed onto this tricyl group. So when you see the reagent itself over the arrow, it's going to appear as T M S C L trimethylsilyl chloride and that's this group right here this is TMSCl so this group when you couple it with triethylamine which looks like this this is a base and we'll discuss why we need this in a second 
If you couple these two things with an alcohol, you will protect the alcohol so that it appears in this form. And then you can undergo subsequent reactions before deprotecting it. Now, if I want to deprotect my protected alcohol, I simply need a strong acid. So I can do anything along the lines of HBr or HI or something like that. Or I can also use a source of F minus. And either of these will cleave the silo group and provide the original alcohol back. Okay. Now I understand protecting groups can be somewhat complicated, especially if it's the first time you're seeing them. So let's take a look at everything step by step here. So I have an alcohol, right? I want to protect the alcohol from some other type of reaction. So the first thing I need to do is protect the alcohol. That's the goal. So what I would do is I would say, all right, I'm going to su subject this to trimethylsilyl chloride along with the triethylamine. All right, now here's what this does. So if I have trimethylsilyl chloride, the chlorine is a good leaving group. The oxygen can come in and can attack as the chlorine is going to leave. Okay, so keep in mind that what we have here, we have the... CH3, 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 right? And so this chlorine, which is going to leave, this OH is going to be able to come and take the place. Now keep in mind this chlorine will have to primarily left for the most part um, because this is somewhat sterically hindered here when we're talking about the partial positive buildup that's going to occur on this silo group. Now, what you need to consider is that this still has its proton when this is attacking. So what I'm really dealing with is R, O, H, and this oxygen has now attacked the Si, CH3, right, and so on and so forth. So there's going to be three of them because it's the tricycle, and the chlorine has left. So that means this oxygen is now short some electrons. It spent these electrons creating a bond to the silicon group. So what the triethylamine is going to do, we have nitrogen, which is a good Lewis base. All right, we have ethyl groups. So keep in mind, this is a CH2, CH3. I'm just drawing it out as ET here to save some space. But I basically have three ethyl groups surrounding this amine. This is going to help by accepting this proton, okay, which will in turn give the extra pair of electrons back to the oxygen. And so what we end up with when we get through that is RO, and then I can write TMS. Now, TMS, again, is this group right down here. I'm abbreviating it. Okay, so this is TMS. The alcohol is now protected. So protected alcohol when we get to this stage. That's a protected alcohol right there. So at this point, I can now subject this to whatever um, reagent I was originally going to use that I needed to basically keep the alcohol away from. So I undergo some reaction X here, and I will give you an actual example where we do something with a Grignard in a minute. And when I get to this point, I react with X, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put R with an X up here to represent that X has done something else on the alkyl chain. I still have O, T, M, S, all right? And then when I get ready to finish here, I'm going to use an acid, so H3O plus, or some source of F minus, okay? And when I do that, I will get R that has been modified by that reaction, OH. I recover the alcohol, so this is where I deprotect. And that's really protection of functional groups in a nutshell. So you, you first see this with alcohols, but the whole process is, all right, I have a functional group that's going to be vulnerable to a reaction that's coming up in my synthetic pathway. I need to protect the functional group so that it does not have a side reaction with whatever X is here, right? I put it into this protected form. Once I manipulate the chain, 
with whatever reagent X was supposed to do to it, then I can go ahead and deprotect and get that alcohol back because maybe I want the alcohol there. Maybe I want to do another transformation with the alcohol down the line, um, etc. All right. So let's take a look at an actual example here. You guys should know, all right, that ketones will react with Grignard reagents. So if you haven't seen the lecture on Grignards, which was like one or two lectures ago, make sure you go back and you visit that so that you have a better understanding of this. Now a Grignard, if I subject this, okay, to a Grignard right now, the Grignard, instead of attacking this carbonyl group, is going to deprotonate the alcohol. So in other words, if I have, we'll just say CH3MGBR, like we were talking about before. If I have CH3MGBR and this guy is present, it's going to grab that proton and it's going to basically deprotonate it before it ever gets close to this carbonyl group over here. Okay, and so we're not interested in that. What we want to happen is we would like to send the methyl group into the carbonyl group and create a tertiary alcohol at this spot. So I have to get this alcohol out of the way because it's going to eat up my Grignard reagent before it ever gets here. So that's the idea behind protection. All right, so what I would have to do is say, okay, wait a minute. I don't want Grignard just yet. I'll get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to protect with trimethylsilyl chloride and triethylamine. So if I do that, then I will be able to protect this. Step two, after this is protected, now I can go ahead and proceed with my Grignard. Right? And once I proceed with my Grignard, Grignards always follow with an acidic workup. And it just so happens that because this is an acidic workup, it'll also deprotect the TMS group because remember TMSs can be cleaved using acid. So what I would end up with here is I would successfully manipulate the ketone and I would recover this alcohol without it having any type of side reaction. Now the ketone is a tertiary alcohol at this point. All right so if you think about what would happen if I begin here so this is my starting point right after I go through step one what I come out with is, okay, the ketone is now ready for the Grignard reagent, and the alcohol now has been protected. So that's step one. Step two would look like this. I send the Grignard in, right, there's the CH3 that attacked, and the alcohol is still protected. And that's what I need here. This is the whole reason I'm protecting is because each step of the way as I'm doing this, if I do this Grignard first, it's going to deprotonate the alcohol up here. So I protect, then I do Grignard, then I hit it with the acid. The acid will protonate the alcohol for the Grignard here, and it will also return because it cleaves the TMS, it'll return the original alcohol, and that's what we have up here. So I hope that this is clear and shines a little bit of light on protecting functional groups. This is probably your first exposure to it if you're following along with the series. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to leave them in the comments section. Uh, please remember to subscribe if you're interested in all the up-to-date information whenever I post videos. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to learn with me. And I will see you for the next lecture where we will get ready to start talking about some of the reactions with alcohols. So we've talked about how to make a lot of alcohols. Now we're going to start discussing reactions of alcohols. And I'll see you guys there for the next lesson.